Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the next few videos in the series, what we're going to be doing is working with the Google Calendar API and essentially what we've just created with this get events function to figure out if we have events in the upcoming days, weeks, months, and so on. So what I'm kind of envisioning here is like I can ask the assistant to say, do I have anything on Monday or do I have something next Saturday or what do I have on September 9th? And then it can list out all of those events and pretty much tell me if I'm free or if I'm busy on those days. Now, I'm just going to do this pretty simply for this tutorial series, but hopefully everything I show you will allow you guys to customize it to your liking. And that's kind of the goal of this series here is not to make everything super specific, but to give you enough knowledge to be able to just really easily tweak a few things and make it exactly how you'd like it. Now, keep in mind, we're not programming like Cortana or Google Home or anything like that. Um, and there is going to be some bugs with the stuff that we do, but I'm trying to make this as easy and as flexible as possible for everyone. Okay, so the first thing we need to do if we actually want to figure out if we have events on a certain day is we need to figure out what day to be looking for those events on. Now, keep in mind, we're going to be doing this with speech, right? So we're going to be asking or we're going to be speaking something to the assistant and then it has to figure out what day we're talking about or what days or whatever it is. Now, that actually is a pretty tricky task because if you think about it, you can ask and talk about the date in so many different ways. You can say, you know, like, September 3rd, you can say next Wednesday, you could say the following Sunday, like you can say so many different things um, that we need to make sure that we capture all of those and are able to figure out the correct date based on that. Now, the way I'm going to program this function here is always assuming we're talking about in the future uh, and not in the past, because it really doesn't make sense to ask what we had in the past. Um, so that's the way I'm going to be making this. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is create a function. It's going to be called get underscore date. And the point of this function is to determine what date it is that we're talking about from a string of text. So in here, it's going to take text. And what we're just going to start off by doing is say text equals text dot lower. Now at the top of our program here, I'm just going to write a few global variables that we're going to need. So the first one I'm going to create is going to be called days. Now inside days, I'm going to have Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. And you know what, I think I'll actually just copy this in because you guys probably don't need to watch me just type these. So I'm just going to copy in these lists that I have here. Uh, again, code will be in the description if you just want to copy this. But essentially, we have for months, January, February, March, April, May, so on. Um, and then days, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Sunday. And then day extensions, which is like, you know, the first, the third, um, the fifth are going to be these right here so that we can actually determine, you know, if we're talking about a date or if we're talking about a number uh, based on if we see these extensions, because someone could say, you know, what do I have on September 5? And that'd be easy for the program to detect because we could look for the number five. But if they said the fifth, we can't just determine if this string is a digit because it has that TH on it. So we need to kind of slice through and figure out how we can detect what are actually numbers and what are actually days. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so after we add these up to the top here, we can go back into our get date function. Uh, and let me just scroll over here to look at what we need to do next. Okay, so we're going to start by just defining today's date. And this is going to be important because if we say something like, you know, what do I have on Sunday? Well, that's two days away from now. So we need to figure out, you know, where we're starting um, to get to Sunday, right? So we're going to say today equals date time dot today. Um, actually, sorry, it's date time dot date dot today. And you guys should have already imported date time from the last tutorial. But if you didn't just go to the top of your program and import date time like that. Okay, so now that we have that, what we're going to start doing is breaking up our text into all of the different words and figuring out what it does. Uh, but the first thing I'm just going to say is if text dot count equals equals today, we're simply just going to return uh, today's date. So this is pretty much saying, you know, if we pass in some kind of text here and it contains the word today, what am I saying? If text.count, if text.count today is greater than zero, I'm sorry about that, uh, then we will return today. And that just means, you know, if we see today, then we're just going to return today's date uh, because that's probably what this person is talking about. All right. So next, what we're going to do here is just set up some variables to store the day, the month, the year, and so on. So we're going to say day equals negative one, because right now we don't have a day. We're going to say day underscore of underscore week equals negative one. We're going to say month equals negative one. And we're going to say year equals today dot year. Now, cool thing, whenever you define a date object like this, you can actually call dot year dot month um, dot 
I guess day as well and and get that information. So we're just going to assume that we're always talking about the current year um, unless we specify a month that is you know past the current year. So let's say we're in like September and the user says uh, January, then we're going to assume they're talking about 2020 January as that is what comes in the future. And we'll get into that uh, as we continue through this function. So anyways, what we're going to do now is just split up our text. So we're going to say for word in text dot split. What this is going to do is just split everything by um, spaces. So we get each word. What we're going to say here is if word in months like this, then what we're going to do is say months or not month. We'll say month equals months dot index and then month plus one. Now, let me just slow down here and kind of explain exactly what we're doing in case anyone gets confused. So essentially what's going to happen is we are going to ask the user to say something. So maybe they say, and I'll type it down here, you know, what do I have planned on Wednesday or let's say like September 9th, like that, like maybe that's what they say, right? So we're going to pass this string of text into this get date function. What we're going to do is initially make everything lowercase. We're going to get the current date. We're going to see if we talk about today anywhere in the string. If we do, we'll just return today's date. Otherwise, we're going to start looping through and looking for a few certain keywords. So we're going to look for the word September, which is one of the months, right? Or any of those months. And if we find that, what we're going to do is figure out what index or what number correspond with that. So in this case, we have all of our months ordered as the way they should be. So if we find September, then we know that that is the ninth month um, or like the eighth index because that's the eighth or the ninth element in our list. So we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, eight, and that is the index, right? So that's how we can figure that out. And we're gonna do the same thing for um, days as well. So like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, when we index those. Okay, so now that we've done that, so we understand how that works. After we look for months, we need to look for days. So what we're going to do now is say, um, l if word in days, then what we're going to do is say day underscore of underscore week. And we're gonna do the same thing here, we're going to say equals days dot index. And in this case, um, day or I guess it's word like that. Now we don't have to add one to this because the way that we actually do the days, um, like in terms of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, starts at index zero in the date time module. But anyways, you guys get the point. The next thing we're gonna do here is say L if, and in this case, uh, we find a digit. So we're gonna say L if word dot is digit. Then what we're gonna do is simply say day equals int oops, like this int word. So that means if someone said something like, what do I have on Friday nine? Now I know that's a weird thing to say, but like, let's say they say that, then what we'll do is say, okay, well, if the word is just a digit and we parse through, maybe we just see nine, all we'll do is just take that, turn it into an int and say, that's the day. Now, the last thing we need to do here is let's say that we go through and we don't find any of those. Now, what we're going to look for is words that have one of these endings. So R D T H and S T. And if they do have that ending, we're going to take whatever the number is that's before that um, and use that as the day. So this is a little bit more complicated. We're going to say for EXT, which I'm just going to say is like extension in day underscore extensions, which is what I've called that list. It has like TH, all of those. We're going to say found equals word dot index or sorry. I don't think we're gonna do index. Oh, we could, but we'll say word.find ext, which is gonna give us the start um, position or index of where we find that extension. And then we're gonna say if found is greater than zero, which essentially means if we're not at the very beginning of the list, we're going to take what's before that word and turn that into a number. Actually, yes, I think. I think that's yeah, that's I think that's what that's doing. But I'm pretty sure what found is saying when it's greater than zero, that means if we have something before that. So if we have something before that, we'll see if it's a digit and then try to turn it into a number. And if we can, then we'll use that as the day. I, I hope that makes sense. So I'm just gonna do a try catch here just because I don't want to bother having to write all this or try accept. Um, so in here we'll do pass like this, but I'm just gonna say day equals int word colon found. Now, the reason that this works is because we're going to slice to where we found the extension. So let's say, you know, like our word is like fifth. Well, we're going to find th, right? And that's going to be at index one because we start, we go zero and then we go one. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, well, that's index one. So let's go from index zero to index one, which is where this TH starts, and then take that number, uh, which is just the five here and store that in day. So that's, that's what we're doing for that. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do here is continue on um, and actually figure out how we can get the correct date using the date time module. So, so far, all we've done is just started programming this function that's going to take in, you know, this text and then figure out what day we're talking about. And right here, we're, we're determining, you know, what day is in the string, what day of the week is in the string and what month so that we can figure out what to do. So that's in the next video, we're going to continue this function and keep going. There is quite a bit more to do. So I just want to split this up into two sections. Um, but yeah, just make sure you guys head off to the next video to see how that works.